So this question is asking us to now identify the types of intermolecular forces present in these formula, formula molecules. Then they want us to rank it. And then they want us to indicate how the boiling point changes and then compare boiling points. So there's a lot of multi-step parts to this question. But let's first make our lives easier by listing all the types of intermolecular forces. There is London dispersion, okay, which is pretty much everything that's not forming a dipole-dipole. Dipole-dipoles are formed when there's enough of an electronegative difference, okay? So that's dipole-dipole, okay? And now the next one is a hydrogen bonding, okay? And that one is specifically when hydrogen is directly connected to um, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. And the last one here, the strongest one, is ionic. That is the strongest intermolecular force. And it goes, this list goes like that, okay, from weakest to strongest. That is there, okay? So now that we know that, and that's a breakdown, we have diethyl ether, and they were nice to give us the actual um, structure of it. So we have CH3, CH2 connected, and then nothing like that. And butanol, okay, which they gave us as well. One, two, three, okay, because four carbons and then OH, and then butane, just like that. So, now then, let's do this. Everything has on dispersion forces, because usually that's what you can find with the carbon-hydrogen connections. So, we can actually say that each one has London dispersion, okay? Just by the presence of there being a molecule, not an atom. As soon as you're connected to each other, you're most likely going to have some form of London dispersion force. So you can say that as a basic one that most molecules have. Dipole, dipole. Now, here we look at our electronegativity sheet. Okay. And you notice that carbon electronegativity is 2.55 for C. And H is 2.20. And that difference, as we discussed earlier, okay, that's only a 0.35 difference. This is not enough to form a dipole-dipole. You need a polar covalent bond for it to really do that. So you notice here that this oxygen, when you're looking at this right here, it has an electronegativity of 3.44, which is significantly higher. That's around 0. 9 or 0 0.89 point being is that it definitely is considered a polar covalent bond so here actually you can say that this also has dipole dipole okay because in a sense this is going to be the positive sides whoops and this is going to be the negative okay and now this one as well, if you notice, there's a carbon attached to an oxygen. So technically, yes, this is a positive and this is a negative side. So this also has a dipole dipole. Okay. And now for the last one, hydrogen bonds, we have an OH here. Okay. So that right there is also going to have a hydrogen bond. Okay. So now we've answered the first part, which was to identify all the molecular forces. This one only has one dispersion. This one has the next upgrade to dipole dipole, and this one has all three. Okay. And now in terms of the relative strength of intermolecular interaction, as discussed, hydrogen bonds are stronger than dipole dipole, which is stronger than London dispersion. So meaning that in terms of their relative strength. This right here is the strongest, and this right here is the weakest. 
and this is just kind of like the one in the middle. So that we can answer number two. Okay, and now let's address the indicating the boiling point. So the boiling point changes as the strength of intermolecular forces increases. As you increase the intermolecular force, the boiling point increases. So this will be also the highest boiling point, and this will be the lowest boiling point. Because as I said, the boiling point increases as the intermolecular forces increase. So here, as IF increases, that means boiling point increases. Okay, so I'd actually write that down somewhere because this does definitely come into play many times. So it's always good to remember. Okay, as you increase intermolecular forces, it's harder to uh, boil. Like you need a, a lot higher of a temperature. And now they want us to compare the boiling points of methanol, ethanol, and propanol. So methanol looks like this. Ethanol looks like that, and propanol looks like that. Okay. In terms of intermolecular forces, why does the boiling point increase as a molecular weight increases? Well, now this is actually more related to London dispersion. As I said earlier, everything usually has it, but these ones can also these ones not can also, but they also do have the so they have LD. This has dipole, and this one also has hydrogen bonds. Same with the rest of these. Hydrogen bond. So then, why is it? Because I can tell you this for a fact that propanol has the highest, and methanol has the lowest boiling point. Well, that's because of London dispersion force. Well, specifically in this case, in the sense, the more surface area you take, the harder it is for you to be boiled. As in, if you can, the longer your stretch. So let's say you even had like a molecule this long. Okay, I could literally not tell you which one would have the higher boiling point, because of the fact that this is a really big molecule. So the more surface area you take based on the fact that because these are, are um, carboxylic compounds, um, hydrocarbons, you can kind of assume that they're always going to have that span of London dispersion forces as you go throughout. So the longer it is, the more surface area it takes, the higher the boiling point. And the reason why I mentioned surface area is because when you have things like this, okay, versus things like that, for example, so let me just as we discussed in the previous question, this one's a little bit more tightly packed, so this one will have the lower, and this one will be higher. So pretty much in summary, it's kind of just like how far you can stretch. But yes, that is the relationship there. So in terms of intermolecular forces, you can thank the London dispersion force as to why this one would be the higher boiling point. You also notice that it doesn't change too much, but you cannot predict empirically the exact number of the boiling point, but based on the fact that this is a bigger molecule, you can thank the London dispersion forces that this has a higher boiling point because everything else is the same. You see hydrogen bonds and you see dipole-dipole. Okay, So hopefully that does break down this question for number eight. So we're able to see all different types of breakdown. And let's see what they did. So this one, diethyl ether, it says it's nonpolar, so only lone dispersion forces. That is not the case, specifically because, especially when you do the 3D model, you notice that the oxygen will definitely be pulled, I mean, these will definitely be pulled towards the oxygen, and the oxygen will kind of have a net pull down because of the fact that the positive and negative sides. Okay? Now, butanol has a hydrogen bond but also the dipole-dipole, they should mention that. And butane only in dispersion forces. So, now they did rank them, they did correct. 
They said that the ether has a higher mass, therefore higher interactions. Well, although it is a bit of a increased mass, oxygen is uh, 16, not the biggest change. So I'll definitely rely more on that dipole dipole interaction. Okay. And now let's see here. Hydrogen bonding dipoles and then dispersion forces are weaker. The point being is that they still have the right, it's not the right idea. They just attributed it more to mass than London dispersion forces. And then this one, the same thing. It says it's lower mass and higher mass. But just remember that it's more so the surface area of as to why. So technically, I'm going to say this is correct. But carbon-oxygen bonds have a dipole, dipole effect. Now, because let me actually draw it out so that there's no confusion. Okay, when you have oxygen, it has its two, um, I guess, shells, and it has then the two R groups here, or the two valence electrons. Okay, these will be pulled over there, and these will be pulled towards it. So kind of the oxygen will kind of be going in that direction of this way because these are definitely more negative because they're literally electrons and then these are just carbons attached to it and on the carbon side when it's attached to the oxygen okay this carbon is going to be more positive this is going to be more negative so even though we have a carbon here okay this is going to be more positive it's not going to cancel it out it's still going to go the direction of that way so that's why there is actually a dipole dipole interaction okay so I'm still gonna mark as correct but with that okay I think we're gonna stop here for tonight so once again thank you for joining my stream hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening and yeah see you during our next session okay Thank <laughs> you.